All right, so I'm going to be talking to you about a task that I have developed with the idea of measuring anhedonia. Um, so, you know, what is anhedonia? It's the reduced ability to experience pleasure. And you can see this guy, um, he's very anhedonic, not, not enjoying this uh, roller coaster ride. And if you th think about anhedonia, um, there are actually two subtypes, or there's thought to be two subtypes. One of them is physical anhedonia, which is the ability, the reduced ability to experience pleasure from non-social rewards like food um, or like money, uh, that kind of thing. Social anhedonia it would be the reduced ability to experience pleasure in social rewards. So um, enjoying being around people, enjoying being around friends, family, enjoying that experience. Um, and when you think about anhedonia um, in general, there's thought to be sort of two components or a reward in general, there's thought to be two components. There's the anticipatory wanting of something and then the consumatory liking aspect of it. So this kid here, he's looking at these cookies and he's like, oh, I'm really excited about eating them. You can see on his face, he's really, thinking he's going to really enjoy that. And then this little girl, she's consuming the cookie, she's, she's enjoying it. So this is, there's the wanting component and then the liking component. Um, anhedonia is present in many psychiatric illnesses. Um, two that it's, it's most talked about is in schizophrenia um, and then also in depression. Um, and in, in schizophrenia, there's often this, they talk about this anhedonia paradox. And what that means is there may be a deficit in wanting something, but if, if someone actually does it, they will eventually like it. So if someone with schizophrenia, you said, do you want to eat a chocolate chip cookie? They're like, ah, uh, I don't, I, I could care less. But if you gave them a chocolate chip cookie and they ate it, they would in the moment really enjoy it. So that's where this anhedonia paradox came from. Um, so healthy controls, um, you know, both have intact wanting and liking, but people with schizophrenia may have more of an impaired wanting deficit. Um, but that's been more shown with physical anhedonia, and there's some evidence that that might not be the case for social anhedonia. So there may be a deficit in both the wanting and the liking component of social rewards. And that's something that, you know, I was hoping to measure with this task and sort of find out. Um, so there's some also neural, you know, neural network evidence showing that there may be some dissociated networks um, that um, process social and non-social rewards. So there's some evidence of that as well. And why should we care about social anhedonia? Well, um, it's present in schizophrenia and, schi and uh, schizophrenia spectrum disorders. It's an area that is very difficult to treat. Um, and it really is the underlying factor that leads to social dysfunction and overall functioning. So social dysfunction is the most common predictor of real world functioning. So if you're not able to function socially, you probably won't be able to have a job. You have difficulty getting your needs met. Um, you're more likely to have depression. There's a lot of reasons why social uh, dysfunction is bad. So, um, so I was trying to design a task to measure social anhedonia. Um, and so I uh, created uh, these face stimuli. So I have um, with, I have three categories of face stimuli. Sorry, this is a little bit blurry. So we had highly attractive faces, average faces, and highly unattractive faces. I don't have a lot of time to talk about, you know, what, what criteria led to highly attractive, average, and unattractive faces, but maybe I can talk about it in the QA session. Um, but Basically, what I want to say here is that I created 300 faces. I had them rated by an independent group, um, and I and then I selected the ones that were most 
highly attractive, the ones that were most likely to be rated as average, and the ones that were most likely to be rated as highly unattractive. Um, and both male and female raters rated them uh, similarly. Um, I'll just go a little bit on a tangent of like, why would rating attractiveness really be a measure of social anhedonia? Um, and I think that, you know, it's something that's, that is a little bit intuitive. If you think about advertising um, and marketing, you know, why do they have models, you know, promoting products because we want to be affiliated with um, beauty and attractiveness and there's an inherent liking in it. Um, so I can definitely go on about that in the uh, QA session, but I, I won't spend too much time on that. But um, there's a lot of evidence that, um, you know, liking or finding someone attractive is um, is a form of social reward. Um, so to get at the liking component, um, so the consumatory component of, of social anhedonia, we had um, people do this task where um, they were shown on a computer screen um, 30 faces that were randomly um, in a random order and they had to either rate the face is highly unattractive or highly, or sorry, that should be highly attract, highly unattractive. This should be highly attractive or, or average. So all they had to do was rate the face. And then we had a control stimulus of uh, 30 colors, 30 different colors, and they had to rate how much they like or disliked it. Um, and then we looked at the ratings of uh, attractiveness ratings and correlated them with um, different measures of social reward. So we had, I had people fill out different um, validated measures of social and non-social rewards. So we had physical anhedonia uh, measured by the Chapman's physical anhedonia scale, social anhedonia measured by the Chapman's social anhedonia scale. We had the anticipatory and consumatory interpersonal pleasure scale, which measures both the anticipatory and consumatory aspects of social anhedonia, and then the temporal experience of pleasure, which measures sort of general reward, general hedonic capacity, um, and there's an anticipatory and a consumatory subscale of that. So um, if you look at sort of, these are in the healthy controls, we have, um, 55 healthy controls, 27 males, so they're um, evenly distributed by sex. Um, and, and, and we were able to show that, yes, people rated the attractive faces as attractive, the average faces as average, and the un unattractive faces un as unattractive. So uh, what we would expect. Um, and then we looked at how do those ratings um, uh, change at different levels of hedonic capacity. So this is looking at, um, we have the um, ACIPS A and ACIPS C. So this is the social anticipatory measure. This is the social consumatory reward measure. And you can see that at, here's face rating on the y-axis, at higher levels of hedonic capacity. So a high ACIPS A means that you are more likely to have more of a anticipatory rewarding response. At lower levels, you're, you have more social anhedonia. Um, and it was actually quite interesting. We found that um, at higher hedonic capacity, you're definitely more likely to rate the attractive faces as highly attractive, but you're also more likely to rate the unattractive faces as as more unattractive. So you can see that there's more of a uh, dissociation between how, how much you rate the attractive and the unattractive. So there's more uh, difference here. And at more anhedonic levels, you see that pretty much people just rate the attractive and unattractive faces 
more like the average faces. So there's less uh, dissociation between the three categories of faces. Um, and that was true through all of our measures, actually. So we see it in the consumatory aspects of uh, the social reward. We see it in um, the TEPS A. We saw it in the TEPS C, so the anticipatory and consumatory aspects of general reward capacity. Um, and then our uh, social and physical and Chapman's anhedonia scale. So we see the same thing. For this scale, it looks a little opposite because at higher, higher number means higher anhedonia. So that's why it's just the opposite. So, um, so then in order to have a score for this task, I then just looked at the difference between um, the ratings for the attractive faces and the ratings for the unattractive faces since the biggest thing that we saw is that there's a, a huge difference here between these two categories. And if you do that, um, you see, you know, similar results. So highly correlated, um, that the attractive minus unattractive rating is highly correlated with the ACIPS A, the ACIPS C, um, the TEPS C, um, the, the social and physical antidonia Chapman scales. Um, so these are all in healthy controls. So we wanted to see um, what does this look like in a, a more anhedonic group, um, like, like patients with schizophrenia. So we recruited patients with early onset psychosis and had them do the task as well. And they rated the faces similarly to the healthy controls, there's actually no significant difference between the ratings of attractive, average, and unattractive for um, controls or those with uh, early psychosis. But you see there's a lot of variability in this uh, early psychosis group, um, which you might expect with a, a clinical population. Um, and then if we look at the same uh, measure, looking at the attractive versus unattractive faces, you see the exact same pattern of response in the patients with psychosis, but there seems to be more of a deficit in this group. So at the same hedonic capacity, the patients seem to, to you know, basically rate um, the faces a little bit lower. And this was really driven by primarily the attractive faces. So they tended to rate the attractive faces as a, a little more unattractive. Um, so we were able to show that actually in schizophrenia and this type of task, assuming that we're looking at a consumatory social reward, that um, there is not an anhedonia paradox, that they uh, do have a deficit in consumatory uh, social reward. And then we see it in the SASR and the PASR. The question is like, we saw it similarly in the, both the social and the physical anhedonia ratings. And I think that may just be a, a reflection of just general reward deficit, processing deficit. So in summary, this task shows that there are consumatory deficits in social reward. Um, and that with higher levels of anhedonia, ratings of attractive faces drop. And in patients with early psychosis, this deficit seems to be more pronounced than in healthy controls.